Pray with me, please. Gracious Heavenly Father, take the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts and make them acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Anybody who's ever traveled knows that what it feels like to be a stranger in a strange land. Um, and, and for me, um, I remember it clearly. Yep, yeah, God's, God's affirming that. So each time along the way, just, just, just follow along, right? This means it's true. I'll try and time it just right. I actually, when I, when I was, uh, when I was uh, ordained, right in the middle of it, there was a little tropical depression off the coast of Florida, and right at the perfect times it would hit. And, and the thunder would come just, just as the bishop would say, tend your flock, that is your charge, and it would go ba-boom, and it would hit right there, and so I took all of that incredibly seriously, so I assume that you all are listening very carefully because God is going to amplify that with some great thunder as we go along, <laughs> but as, as, as I remember traveling, I remember going to Europe, that was my first real experience with that, and, and uh, as far as going into a completely different country with a completely different language um, and, and going there, and, and, um, and we got off the plane, and, and we slept for about six or seven hours, because you know the time change and all that throws you off. But we got up in the afternoon, and we decided we were going to go into Venice. We were going we to travel over there, and the way you do that is on this metro rail kind of thing. And so Cheris and I went out, and we went along the way and, and got up to the metro rail, and we had no idea how to pay. We had no idea which train was going which way or how we were supposed to go. And somehow we ended up getting on a train going the wrong way. We didn't know who to ask. We didn't even know if we were going the wrong way because everybody spoke different language. Everybody spoke something I didn't understand, she didn't understand. And we were kind of scared to ask, you know what I mean? And so we're going along just sitting there. Something told me we were going the wrong direction. I just knew it. Finally, I got up the guts and I asked somebody, and luckily she spoke just enough English to tell me I was on the wrong train going the wrong way. So I got off, and finally we figured out how to get back on the right train and then headed back the way we were, we were supposed to go. But it feels like that, you know, when you're, when you're in a place where they're speaking all different languages along the way, and, and you look around, you get this feeling like, who am I? You know, you, you, you're a stranger and you sense everything around you is strange and, and they don't, they don't, who are they? And, and you feel kind of close. It's, it's quite scary. It's quite scary along the way. It wasn't until I got back into, into nice United States that I began to hear people speaking English again and, and was able to go on. And, um, and that worked pretty well until I came to Miami, <laughs> right? Miami's like, like in, a, in a different ball game as well now, isn't it? So many people speaking a different language. Now, I took six years of first-year Spanish, so you'd think I'd be able to get that. But at the same time, I don't. They Talking very fast, it's really hard for me to follow along, and it, and it feels very different. And when I talk to a number of people who have been here a long time and have watched and seen that change from going to where English seemed it was the predominant thing to now where it's like a different language out there. I can't go to Walmart and ask somebody for where things are because they don't get what I'm trying to say to them. And it's, it's almost as if being a stranger in a strange land and a lot of others that I've talked about um, who are here, many of them, some have decided the best way to deal with that is to move out to another area. But the truth is, the whole world has changed around us, hasn't it? Even though we may speak English, we may not speak of the same English. We may not understand it in the same way. So many things have changed around us. Here's one of those things that has changed drastically. The fact that you all are here on Sunday, on a Labor Day weekend, says something about values and where you are with that. But I can tell you driving in, there's a lot of people that are not here. And if it were pretty out, they'd be out on the water or someplace else, or they're probably out at cafes, or they're sleeping in. But whatever the case, that value has changed, and you all are a different breed, right? You all are, are coming at it in a different way. And it can feel, even there, like we are strangers 
in a strange land. So how do we deal with that? Our scripture gives us some great guidance today. Deuteronomy is a story that is given to the people of God and remember their story as they traveled through the wilderness. At first they were in Egypt and though it was a different land, they were at least comfortable there. They, they were slaves, but they had fit in. And you can see that many times we can fit into things even as we're strangers and not realize that we're becoming the slaves that are a part of that. We can become a slave to the world that's out and around us. But instead, God freed those people from that slavery, took them out into the wilderness, and while he was out there, he gave them a law. He gave them a blessed law. It was a law meant to guide and direct them, but it wasn't just for them. They, when they came into the new land, they were still strangers. They were still a minority. Everybody else practiced and did things very differently than they were. But listen carefully to what Deuteronomy says. It says, they will look at you and they will begin to see what you do, how you live, that this law is very different than the world around us. And they'll say, wow, what a just law that is. What an incredible thing that is. And they will be guided towards that law. The way the scripture calls it is being a light to the nations. That not only did they teach the law, they did and followed the law. That in living and following those ordinances and teaching it to their children and passing it along, they became something different. They stood out, not because of their language, but because of who God had made them to be. Not because of all of the traditions, but because of who God had made them to be. But Israel also shows us what can happen when we become the majority. What happens when we come along? I was at Sugar Creek Presbyterian Church, a 250-year-old congregation, and when I read their history, at one point they were a minority, part of the Revolutionary War, part of all those things that went on as they stood up. And, the, and then they became the majority. And as they came along, they grew really big and really comfortable and really successful, and they did all these things, and then the world changed around them, and they didn't change with it. And immediately, things changed. They also became the minority that was a part of it, and they started to fall apart in so many ways, and their dialogue became very much like the people that they got upset with back in the Revolutionary War. Isn't that interesting when we switch? As it comes along, we can be strangers in a strange land, but God reminds us who we are. That's how we approach being a minority. And who are we? Who are you? So act like that, right? Live like that. They will know we are Christians by our love. They will know we are Christians. They will know we are children of God by how we act by how we live, by how we treat one another, by how we talk when we're out in the world. If we sound just like the world, they will know no different. But we have been given this wonderful, not just law, but the embodiment of that law in Jesus Christ. And so as we are surrounded, the key to how we do that, it's not about complaining and griping about the world and the changes that are going on. It's not saying, oh, boo-hoo, we're a minority. We don't speak. Instead, we are called to embody the values of what it means to be a child of God. We are called to show forth the love in the way we love our families, the way we love each other in church, and the way we live out there in the world with other people. When we show forth that closed brokenness of the world that's out there, we give nothing new. But we become a light. We become a light no matter what the circumstances are. So it's not about what's out there, folks. It's about what's in here. It is not from outside that we are defiled. It is from what's coming out of us that is defiled. Our anger does not produce God's righteous relationship. Our anger at the world, our anger at things going on, is not going to produce right relationship. Instead, turn towards God. Hear the call, each of us individually, to embody what God has called us to do and to be and live like. 
And then write it on our foreheads, in our families, for our children, for our grandchildren, for all the rest. For they will be looking to you to see something different than the world. Let's show it to them. Jesus Christ has overcome. Not even death can separate us from the love of God. It doesn't matter whether we're the majority or the minority. We are children of God. That's who God has made us to be. So let's live like it. Let's live like that so that the grace of God, the love of God, will, become, will come out to the whole world to see and they will say, wow, that is so different. That is so different than what I've been looking at. Let us instead reflect who we are in Jesus Christ so that the world will see the kingdom of heaven embody in us. In Jesus' name, amen.